Hello and welcome to another episode of Political Talk. I'm Hugo Pellegrinolo, and today I'll be talking about Senator Ted Cruz, a Republican senator from the state of Texas. And as always, thank you very much for watching today's video. And as always, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. And as well, we do have English, Spanish, Portuguese, and French subtitles on the video. Rafael Edward Cruz is an American politician and attorney serving as the junior United States Senator for Texas since 2013. A member of the Republican Party, Cruz served as Solicitor General of Texas from 2003 to 2008. Rafael Edward Cruz was born on December 22, 1970, at Foothills Medical Center in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, to Eleanor Elizabeth Wilson and Rafael Cruz. Eleanor Wilson was born in Wilmington, Delaware. She is of three-quarters Irish and one-quarter Italian descent, and earned an undergraduate degree in mathematics from Rice University in the 1950s. Cruz's father was born and raised in Cuba, the son of a Canary Islander who immigrated to Cuba as child. As a teenager in the 1950s, He was bitten by agents of Fulgencio Batista for opposing the Batista regime. He left Cuba in 1957 to attend the University of Texas at Austin and obtain political asylum in the United States after his four-year student visa expired. He earned Canadian citizenship in 1973 and became a naturalized United States citizen in 2005. At the time of his birth, Ted Cruz's parents had lived in Calgary for three years and were working in the oil business as owners of a seismic data processing firm for oil drilling. Cruz has said that he is the son of two mathematicians computer programmers. In 1974, Cruz's father left the family and moved to Texas. Later that year, Cruz's parents reconciled and relocated the family to Houston. They divorced in 1997. Cruz has two older half-sisters. Miriam's Farina Cruz and Roxana Lords Cruz, from his father's first marriage. Miriam died in 2011. Cruz began going by Ted at age 13. Cruz ran as a Tea Party candidate in the 2012 Republican primary, and the Washington Post called his victory the biggest upset of 2012. A true grassroots victory against very long odds. On January 19, 2011, after U.S. Senator Kay Bailey Hutchison said she would not seek re-election, Cruz launched his campaign via a blogger conference call. In the Republican primary, he ran against sitting Lt. Gov. David Dayworst. Cruz was endorsed first by former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin and then by the Club for Growth, a fiscally conservative political action committee. Eric Erickson, former editor of prominent conservative blog Red State. The Free Dome Works for America Super PAC. Nationally syndicated radio host Mark Levin. Tea Party Express. Young Conservatives of Texas, and U.S. Senators Tom Coburn, Jim DeMint, Mike Lee, Rand Paul and Pat Toomey. He was also endorsed by former Texas Congressman Ron Paul, George P. Bush, and former U.S. Senator from Pennsylvania Rick Santorum. Former Attorney General Ed Meese served as National Chairman of Cruz's campaign. Cruz won the runoff for the Republican nomination by a 14-point margin over Dayworst, 
Support for Dayworth having plummeted while Cruz's vote total dramatically increased from the first round. Cruz won despite being outspent by Dayworth, who held a statewide elected office, $19 million to $7 million. In the November 6 general election, Cruz faced Democratic nominee Paul Sadler an attorney and a former state representative from Henderson, in East Texas. Cruz won with 4.5 million votes to Sadler's 3.2 million. Two minor candidates garnered the remaining 3% of the vote. According to a poll by Cruz's pollster Wilson Perkins Allen Opinion Research, Cruz received 40% of the Hispanic vote outperforming Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney among Hispanics in Texas. After Time magazine reported that Cruz might have violated ethics rules by failing to publicly disclose his financial relationship with Caribbean Equity Partners investment holdings during the 2012 campaign, he said his failure to disclose the connection was inadvertent. In January 2016, the New York Times reported that Cruz and his wife had taken out nearly $1 million in low-interest loans from Goldman Sachs and Citibank, and failed to report them on Federal Election Commission disclosure statements as required by law. Cruz disclosed the loans on his Senate financial disclosure forms in July 2012 but not on the FEC forum. There is no indication that Cruz's wife had any role in providing any of the loans, or that the banks did anything wrong. The loans were largely repaid by later campaign fundraising. A spokesperson for Cruz said his failure to report the loans to the FEC was inadvertent and that he would file supplementary paperwork. As of November 2018, Cruz has sponsored 105 bills of his own, including, S. 177, a bill to repeal the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act and the health care-related provisions of the Health Care and Education Reconciliation Act of 2010. Introduced January 29, 2013 S.505, a bill to prohibit the use of drones to kill citizens of the United States within the United States, introduced March 7, 2013 S.729 and S.730. Bills to investigate and prosecute felons and fugitives who illegally purchase firearms, and to prevent criminals from obtaining firearms through straw purchases and trafficking, introduced March 15, 2013. S.1336 a bill to permit states to require proof of citizenship for registering to vote in federal elections. Introduced July 17, 2013 S. 2170, a bill to increase coal, natural gas, and crude oil exports, to approve the construction of the Keystone XL pipeline, to expand oil drilling offshore, onshore, in the National Petroleum Reserve, Alaska, and in Indian reservations to give states the sole power of regulating hydraulic fracturing, to repeal the Renewable Fuel Standard, to prohibit the Environmental Protection Agency from regulating greenhouse gases, to require the EPA to assess how new regulations will affect employment, and to earmark natural resource revenue to paying off the federal government's debt. Introduced March 27, 2014 S. 2415, a bill to amend the Federal Election Campaign Act of 1971 to eliminate all limits on direct campaign contributions to candidates for public office, 
introduced June 3, 2014 after the death of Associate Justice Antonin Scalia, Cruz said that the winner of the 2016 U.S. presidential election, rather than Obama, should appoint a new justice. In June 2016, Cruz blamed the Obama administration for the Orlando nightclub shooting, reasoning that it did not track the perpetrator Omar Mateen properly while he was on the terrorist watch list. Following the terrorist attack on Nice, France, Cruz said in a statement that the country was at risk as a result of the Obama administration having a willful blindness to radical Islamists. With the passing of Fidel Castro in November, Cruz charged Obama with celebrating and lionizing Castro in public statements he made addressing the death. On December 28, after Secretary of State John Kerry gave a speech defending the U.S. single quote s. decision to allow a U.N. Resolution to pass that condemned Israeli settlements on land meant to be part of a future Palestinian state, Cruz denounced the speech as disgraceful, and said that history would remember Obama and Kerry as relentless enemies of Israel. Cruz also accused the Obama administration of having a radical anti-Israel agenda. Relationship with Donald Trump Cruz was one of Donald Trump's most vocal critics during the 2016 presidential campaign, with the two often exchanging heated comments directed at each other, and Cruz's family. But he became an important ally of Trump's in the Senate. In late January 2017, Cruz praised Supreme Court nominee Neil Gorsuch as brilliant and immensely talented in a written statement. On February 23, while speaking at the 2017 FAC, Cruz showed interest in Trump's nomination of a young justice in the mold of Scalia and Clarence Thomas. On March 1, he called Trump's joint address to Congress the previous day positive and unifying. Cruz said that during his visit to the Mar-a-Lago estate on March 18, he spoke with affiliates of Trump while negotiating the American Health Care Act. On April 6, shortly after the Shayrat missile strike, he released a statement displaying his interest in having Trump appeal to Congress to take military action in Syria to prevent Islamic terrorists from acquiring weapons stored in Syria. In April 2018, in the copy accompanying Trump's entry on the Time 100 Most Influential People of 2017, Cruz wrote, President Trump is doing what he was elected to do, disrupt the status quo. Cruz's authorship was criticized by Charles Pierce of Esquire, J. Willis of GQ, and CNN's Chris Eliza. Friction with fellow Republican members of Congress Cruz has used harsh rhetoric against fellow Republican politicians and his relationships with various Republican members of Congress have been strained. In 2013, he called Republicans he considered insufficiently resistant to Obama's proposals a surrender caucus. He also called fellow Republicans squishes on gun control issues during a Tea Party rally. Cruz's role in the United States federal government shutdown of 2013 in particular attracted criticism from a number of Republican colleagues. Republican Senator John McCain was reported to have particularly disliked Cruz. In a Senate floor speech in 2013, McCain denounced Cruz's reference to Nazis when discussing the Affordable Care Act. In March 2013, McCain also called Cruz and others wacko birds whose beliefs are not reflective of the views of the majority of Republicans. 
During the 2016 Republican presidential primaries, John Boehner described Cruz as Lucifer in the flesh. In an interview, Lindsey Graham said, if you killed Ted Cruz on the floor of the Senate, and the trial was in the Senate, nobody would convict you. In a heated Senate floor speech in July 2015, Cruz accused Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell of telling a flat-out lie over his intentions to reauthorize the Export-Import Bank of the United States, which Cruz opposes. What we just saw today was an absolute demonstration that not only what he told every Republican senator, but what he told the press over and over and over again was a simple lie, Cruz said. His incendiary outburst was unusual in the cordial atmosphere of the Senate, according to Reuters. In the same speech, Cruz assailed the Republican majority in both houses of Congresses for what he called an insufficiently conservative record. His speech, and especially his accusation against McConnell, was condemned by various senior Republican senators, with McCain saying that the speech was outside the realm of Senate behavior and a very wrong thing to do. Orrin Hatch expressed a similar opinion. I don't condone the use of that kind of language against another senator unless they can show definitive proof that there was a lie. And I know the leader didn't lie. Cruz alleged that McConnell scheduled a vote on the Exum Bank as part of a deal to persuade Democrats like Maria Cantwell to stop blocking a trade bill. McConnell denied there was any deal. And that denial was what Cruz called a lie. Hatch said McConnell did pledge to help Cantwell get a vote on the Exum Bank. Among Cruz's few close allies in the Senate is Mike Lee of Utah. Cruz has expressed pride in his reputation for having few allies, saying in June 2015 that he has been vilified for fighting the Washington cartel. When Boehner resigned from the House in September 2015, Cruz expressed his concern that before resigning Boehner might have cut a deal with Nancy Pelosi to fund the Obama administration for the rest of its tenure. The next month, the budget agreement passed in the House by a vote of 266 to 187 with unanimous support from Democrats and Boehner, lifting the debt ceiling through March 2017. Cruz called the agreement complete and utter surrender. Cruz is one of the Senate Republicans in favor of the nuclear option, to speed up consideration of President Trump's nominees. Changing the Senate's rules to a simple majority vote would ensure a quicker pace on Trump's court picks 2020 presidential election. Cruz backed a failed appeal to the United States Supreme Court attempting to overturn or nullify the 2020 presidential election in Pennsylvania filed by U.S. Representative Mike Kelly which argued that the Pennsylvania Constitution requires in-person voting excepting narrow and defined circumstances. The Supreme Court of Pennsylvania had already rejected this argument. The U.S. Supreme Court declined to take up the case or issue an injunction and Pennsylvania's electoral college votes were cast for Joe Biden. Cruz later led an effort by a group of Republican senators to refuse to count Pennsylvania's electoral college votes, citing baseless allegations of fraud. Electoral college vote count and storming of the United States Capitol Main Articles, 2021 United States Electoral College Vote Count and 2021 Storming of the United States Capitol on January 6, 2021, during the debate about whether Congress should accept Arizona's electoral votes, 
Cruz said that 39% of Americans believed the 2020 presidential election was rigged, but that I am not arguing for setting aside the result of this election. Some observers think Cruz knew claims about fraud in the election were inaccurate, and that this speech and his earlier statements were attempts to mislead for political gain. There are also concerns that he misrepresented the percentage of those concerned about rigging, with the correct proportion being 28 percent. Congress's counting of the Electoral College votes was interrupted by an insurrectionist mob that stormed the United States Capitol after a rally near the White House. The attack on the Capitol resulted in the deaths of five people, including a police officer. When Congress reconvened that evening to continue the count, Cruz voted in support of the objections to Arizona's and Pennsylvania's electoral votes. The Senate rejected these objections by 93, 6 and 92, 7, respectively. The Texas Democratic Party called on Cruz to resign saying that his efforts to block Joe Biden's lawful victory empowered the Trump supporters who stormed the Capitol. The Texas Democratic Party also called on the U.S. Department of Justice to open an official investigation into Cruz for inciting sedition and treason. The Houston Chronicle called for Cruz to resign. The San Antonio Express News called for Cruz to be expelled from the Senate. Thousands of lawyers and law students called for him to be disbarred for inciting the insurrection. President-elect Joe Biden and Republican Senator Pat Toomey both said Cruz was complicit in the big lie of Trump's allegations of voter fraud. Republican operative Chad Sweet the chair of Cruz's 2016 presidential campaign, denounced Cruz for assault on our democracy. Several corporations halted donations to Cruz and other Republicans who voted to overturn the election based on Trump's false claims. Lauren Blair Bianchi, Cruz's communications director, resigned. On May 28, 2021, Cruz voted against creating an independent commission to investigate the riot. On the eve of the one-year anniversary of the attack, he was recorded on video calling it a violent terrorist attack, which drew sharp criticism from Fox News host Tucker Carlson on his program that night. Cruz appeared on Carlson's program the next night to apologize for that comment as frankly dumb and sloppy. The next day CNN reported that Cruz had characterized the attack as terrorism at least 17 times during the preceding year. Kankin Controversy 2021 Texas Power Crisis in February 2021 during a historic winter storm, up to 4.3 million Texas residents were left without power and millions of others without drinking water, including Cruz and his family. In the middle of the storm, Cruz and his family were spotted on a plane heading to Cancun, Mexico, where they planned to stay at the luxury Ritz-Carlton Hotel and escape their home which Heidi Cruz called in a text message freezing. Cruz requested that the Houston police escort him and his family through the airport. Cruz left the family poodle Snowflake alone inside the house without heat. Reporters saw the dog through the window of the front door of the dark and empty house. Later, a self-identified security guard told a reporter he was caring for the dog. Cruz's political allies and rivals condemned him for leaving Texas during a crisis and traveling internationally during the COVID-19 pandemic. Cruz initially said he was taking his daughters on a week-long vacation from school at their request, in an attempt to be a good dad. Later that day, he returned to Texas, 
after allowing his family to stay in Mexico, saying that the vacation was a mistake. Protesters calling for his resignation greeted him in front of his house upon his return. After returning from Cancun, Cruz volunteered in Houston to help with recovery efforts. So what should we do when it comes to senators so crooked as Ted Cruz? The first thing we can do is at least try to vote for people that do have our interest in mind when it comes to an election. And second, another thing, do not vote for people that are literally gonna leave your state in the dark and go to Cancun. As always, thank you very much for watching today's videos. If you have any doubts at all, you can always send me an email to hugo.loh at gmail.com. Thank you very much for watching today's videos. Do not forget to subscribe and like and comment on the video.